A quick recap about Logan and how he ended up like an old fart. Following the removal of adamantium from his body by the Silver Samurai, Logan encounters Charles and Magneto at the airport. They enlist his help in combating the Sentinel Army, which has nearly wiped out all mutants. Since Wolverine is indestructible with an adamantium skeleton, Magneto assists in restoring it, albeit at a price. Aging sets in when cell decay outpaces regeneration. Stryker selects Wolverine over his brother Victor for Project X for this very reason. At the time, Wolverine was youthful and his regenerative abilities were optimal. However, by the time Magneto assists in restoring the adamantium, Wolverine has surpassed that prime age, initiating his gradual aging process, ultimately leading to the events of Logan. Charles, now elderly and afflicted with dementia, struggles to distinguish his own identity after inhabiting numerous minds over the years. He unwittingly caused a tragedy when a seizure led to the deaths of most of the X-Men team and 60 others, a fact Logan has kept hidden from him. It's the year 2029, no new mutants have emerged in 25 years, and Logan, grappling with failing healing abilities and toxic adamantium in his body, endures suffering, earning a living as a taxi driver and sleeping in his car. Upon encountering thugs stealing car tires, Logan intervenes, only to be shot with a shotgun. Despite his wounds, he rises, unleashing his claws in self-defense, dispatching most of the assailants fatally. Afterward, he seeks refuge in a motel, tending to his injuries and extracting bullets, though the pain persists because of incomplete healing. Logan contemplates purchasing a cruise ship where he could safely take Charles, knowing the open sea would prevent any harm. Days later, at the graveyard, a Mexican woman named Gabriella seeks his help, addressing him as Wolverine. Angrily, Logan dismisses her, and she drives away. Later, while collecting medicine for Charles outside a hospital, Logan is watched by a man named Pierce. Pierce joins Logan in his car, informing him of a massacre Logan inadvertently caused. He warns Logan to report any contact from a woman seeking help or face consequences. Frustrated, Logan heads to the deserted factory where Charles is kept encountering another mutant named Caliban, who can track other mutants. He updates Logan that Charles has started to gain his memory and keeps trying to read Caliban's mind. Logan went to meet Charles, who had gone baloney again, drifting his wheels around. While Logan attempts to administer medication, Charles struggles and falls from the wheelchair. Charles then suffers a seizure, rendering movement impossible for anyone nearby. Despite the challenge, Logan successfully administers the necessary medication and secures Charles to his bed. During their exchange, Charles mentions a young mutant in need at the Statue of Liberty. But Logan reminds him that no mutants have been born in 25 years. As Logan exits the tank, Charles, observing their situation, comments that no one should endure such a life and suggests Logan is merely waiting for him to pass away. The following day, Caliban informs Logan that the medication he brought isn't sufficient to control the seizures. Accusing Logan of hoarding money to purchase a yacht, Caliban expresses dissatisfaction despite Logan's assertion that it's for their benefit. Caliban cannot survive sunlight and criticizes Logan's plan to live on a sunseeker, likening his potential existence below deck to that of Nosferatu. He warns Logan that withholding emotional pain will only exacerbate their situation. They have a relationship similar to the odd couple. Frustrated, Logan leaves. Later, while responding to a ride request, Logan encounters a girl playing ball, and Gabriella approaches him, seeking transportation to the Canadian border for a sum of $50,000. Logan initially declines due to the danger following Gabriella, but she offers $20,000 up front, persuading him to agree. Logan returns home to Charles, and informs him of his upcoming absence, promising to take them to the sea upon his return. Charles expresses concern for their safety, but Logan reassures him. However, Logan receives an urgent message from Gabriella, prompting him to hasten to the motel. Upon arrival, he discovers Gabriella's lifeless body and her phone. When he gets back home, Caliban finds a young girl's belongings, indicating her presence. Pierce confronts Logan about his visit to the motel and the missing girl. Their confrontation is interrupted when Pierce is struck unconscious by an assailant wielding a metal pipe. The professor arrives and reveals that the girl is the one he mentioned earlier, named Laura. Caliban disposes of Pierce's unconscious body as per Logan's request. 
but Pierce regains consciousness and retrieves his gun. As Pierce's group closes in, Logan hurriedly takes Charles to the car, leaving Laura behind, but is soon surrounded by armored vehicles. Pierce arrives and demands to know the whereabouts of the girl. Logan asserts she's not with them and queries about Caliban's location, but Pierce remains silent. Logan attempts to attack him with his claws, but is swiftly subdued by the mercenaries. Pierce commands his men to enter and retrieve the girl. Meanwhile, Laura calmly observes the events on TV, resembling a godfather figure as she munches on cereal. A man with a bionic arm and handcuffs approaches her, met with her intense glare. Suddenly, gunfire and screams erupt outside. Laura emerges, unsheathing her claws and effortlessly dispatching several men before retreating indoors, trailed by the team. Despite being caught briefly, Laura slips away from her captor, only to be shot by Pierce's wired arrow and pulls her. Two of the men take her with them. Logan sees that she has a claw on her feet, and she uses it to get out of their grip. Logan then runs off to protect Charles and starts driving. He finds Laura along the way. She leaps onto the hood and enters the car. Logan skillfully evades the pursuing SUVs, causing one to be destroyed by a passing train as they cross the tracks. Pierce, frustrated, orders the mutant tracker, Caliban, to be brought forward. He demands Caliban to use his tracking abilities, but Caliban refuses. In response, Pierce exposes Caliban to direct sunlight, causing painful burns to his skin. Pierce informs Caliban that the girl they seek is a product of artificial creation, part of experiments conducted by the company Transigen. Any harm caused by her actions could result in numerous lawsuits against the company. Meanwhile, Logan discovers from a video on Gabriella's phone that these children were born through genetic manipulation using Mexican women in a lab in Mexico. They are being trained as weapons, although some resist violence and become uncontrollable. After completing another project, the company abandoned the program and began sedating the children. Gabriella, along with other nurses, helped the children escape. They have heard of a safe haven for mutants in Canada called Eden and plan to flee there. However, Gabriella became separated from the other children, leading her to seek help from Logan. She also reveals that Laura is Logan's daughter. Logan decides to take them to Vegas to secure a new vehicle and rest. Upon arriving in the room, Logan sifts through Laura's belongings and discovers data concerning the mutant children. He then administers the professor's seizure medication to Laura before departing. Procuring a new truck, Logan waits at a bar while it undergoes preparation. While reading an X-Men comic, he notices Eden mentioned with the same GPS location as the one provided by Gabriella. Returning to the hotel, Logan encounters transigen mercenaries and attempts to infiltrate the premises. Suddenly, everyone except Logan and Laura becomes paralyzed due to the professor's seizures. Quick pause, Logan and Laura both were able to move during professor's seizures and no one else could. No explanation has been given on it anywhere. Write your theories in the comment section. Logan moves towards the room and proceeds to incapacitate the mercenaries one by one. Laura helps him hand over the injection, which ultimately stops Professor's seizure. Quick question for fans, why did the bodies of mercenaries not fall on the ground, even after Logan stabbed them in the head? The answer will be mentioned at the end of the video. Finally, Logan retrieves Charles and escapes the scene. They find themselves on the highway, Logan expressing frustration at the automated trucks. Suddenly, a truck veers towards their car, causing chaos on the road. Professor uses his powers to soothe the horses, while Logan aids in pushing the truck out of a ditch. Catherine extends an invitation to their home for dinner, which Logan declines, but Charles accepts. Meanwhile, Caliban encounters Dr. Rice, the creator of Laura. Rice accuses Caliban of providing delayed information, allowing Logan and his companions to stay ahead. He tries to persuade Caliban by assuring him that they only seek the girl and won't harm his friends. The scene shifts to Catherine's house, where they gather for dinner. Following the meal, Catherine suggests they stay the night and leave in the morning, with Logan initially refusing, but ultimately conceding after Charles insists they take a rest. In the restroom, Logan voices his concerns to Charles about the danger their presence poses to the family. Charles attempts to reassure him that everything will be all right. Just then, Logan overhears Will expressing frustration over the water supply being shut down by individuals they have a dispute with. Charles proposes that Logan accompany Will, after tucking Charles into bed, he tells Logan this is what a family feels like and to embrace it. Will and Logan set out to repair the pump, only to be confronted by armed men claiming the property is private. Logan orders the men to retreat to their truck and depart. The landlord smirks at Logan and brandishes his rifle. 
As the man advances, Logan swiftly disarms him, breaking the rifle in two. Will draws his gun, prompting the men to retreat. Meanwhile, Charles lies on his bed and notices a shadow at the door. He confides in Logan about his past actions, recalling his role in the closure of the school and the deaths of some mutants. To his horror, the figure at the door turns out to be a clone of Logan, who fatally stabs Charles in the chest. Laura attacks the clone, but he easily overpowers her. Nate attempts to intervene with a baseball bat, but the clone swiftly heals and kills Nate. Outside, Logan and Will hear a gunshot from the house. Will investigates and discovers his wife and son dead. He is then attacked by the clone. Logan enters the house and encounters the clone descending the stairs, experiencing a sense of deja vu. The clone seizes Laura and departs. Logan ascends the stairs to check on Charles, finding him still breathing. He reassures Charles that he wasn't the one who stabbed him. Meanwhile, the landlord returns with reinforcements, encountering Logan's clone. Mistaking the clone for Logan, he offers money in exchange for allegiance. Rice and his team observe from their van while Caliban regrets his choices. The clone advances toward the landlord, who shoots him. Enraged, the clone retaliates, dispatching their assailants one by one, despite Rice's pleas to cease. Caliban seizes two grenades and detonates them, causing an explosion. Pierce leaps from the van to safety. As the clone advances toward Laura, Logan intervenes, stabbing him in the back and engaging in a fierce battle. However, the youthful clone's rapid healing abilities give him the upper hand. He gets the taste of his own medicine as the clone uses its claws on Logan. Just as the clone is poised to deliver a fatal blow, Will drives his truck into him, pinning him against a backhoe loader. Will exits the vehicle and shoots the clone three times, but as he turns to aim at Logan, he realizes he's out of ammunition and collapses lifeless to the ground. Logan rises, retrieves Laura, and the following day, buries Charles's remains. Emotions run high as Laura holds his hand. When Logan attempts to start the car, it fails, leading him to vent his frustration until he faints. Laura takes action, stealing a nearby car and transporting him to a doctor, who diagnoses him with a poisonous substance in his body. Although the doctor recommends a hospital visit, Logan insists he knows what's afflicting him. Laura follows Logan outside and leads him to the car. Despite Logan's skepticism that Eden is merely a fictional place from comics, Laura persists, eventually convincing him to drive her to North Dakota. Meanwhile, Dr. Rice administers an injection to the clone, facilitating his rapid healing. Pierce discovers evidence revealing the destination of the children. As Logan drives, fatigue overtakes him, prompting Laura to take the wheel. The next morning, Logan awakens to Laura's call from a cliff. He spots other children atop the mountain before losing consciousness. They haul him up via a pulley system, tend to his injuries, and administer the same drug to him used by Dr. Rice. After two days of unconsciousness, Logan awakens and expresses to Richter that they've delayed too long, emphasizing the danger. Richter explains that it's the final opportunity for everyone to convene, planning to flee to the Canadian border between noon and 5 p.m., when the satellites will be inactive. Reluctantly, Richter offers Logan the money, but he declines, insisting Richter keep it. Laura becomes distressed at Logan's decision not to accompany them. Despite her protests, Logan explains his fear of causing harm to those he cares about, prompting Laura to storm outside. The following morning, Logan discovers that all the children have already departed when he wakes up. Upon hearing drone noises, he realizes the kids are being pursued by transigen. Grabbing the drug provided by Richter, Logan races towards the commotion. Mercenaries pursue the children, capturing them one by one as they resist. Exhausted, Logan injects himself with the drug, and then we hear this spine-chilling sound. <laughs> Logan dashes forward with the ferocity of a wild beast, swiftly dispatching several minions. Laura finds herself encircled by mercenaries, but Logan rushes to her aid. Father and daughter join forces, combating their attackers. However, as the effects of the drug fade, Logan begins to struggle. They witness the captured children on their knees, held by Rice's team. Logan confronts Rice, who reveals their sinister plan to eradicate mutant genes akin to polio by contaminating food and water, and then creating their own mutants. In a swift act of justice, Logan eliminates the doctor and disables Pierce's bionic hand. With Laura and other mutant children's assistance, they neutralize the remaining mercenaries. Pierce releases X-24 from its confinement, initiating a fierce battle with Logan. Laura unleashes her fury on the clone, while the other mutant children exact revenge on Pierce. Utilizing his powers, Richter hurls a truck at the clone. Severely injured, Logan urges the kids to flee quickly. The clone emerges and attacks Logan from behind, stabbing him and dragging him to a broken tree. 
With a forceful throw, Logan is impaled by a jagged branch piercing through his abdomen. As the clone prepares to deliver the final blow, Laura intervenes, shooting him with the adamantium bullet from behind. Laura then removes the branch, offering some relief to Logan, who is gravely wounded. Tearfully, Laura listens as Logan urges her to depart with her friends. He tells Laura not to become the weapon she was made to be. Holding his hand, she tearfully calls him Daddy, as Logan comes to understand the depth of Charles's earlier words. With his suffering at an end, Logan passes away, finding peace at last. Laura and the other children bury Logan's body before departing, marking the end of Wolverine's journey. During the video, we asked how some mercenaries stood still, even though Logan had stabbed them in the skull during the professor's seizure. It's because Professor Seizures were actually trying to stop the mercenaries like he used to do. He had control over their minds. If you look back to X-Men First Class, Magneto killed Sebastian Shaw with a coin, but Shaw's body was still standing. For the same reason, Professor had control over his mind at that time. Thank you for watching till the end. Like the video if you enjoyed this explanation. Leave a comment if you are excited about the new Deadpool and Wolverine movie. Until next time.